Hey guys, what is up? In case you're new to our channel, I'm Martin, and I'm ex-military, Purple Heart veteran, and our YouTube channel is RV Street. Our channel is all about showing people how to take care of their RVs right. So most of you guys, for the most part, can take care of almost everything on this RV if you are shown the right way to do it. And that's what we do on our channel. RV newbies make so many mistakes that often can be avoided. And it just causes them frustration and grief and sometimes a lot of money. All you need is some basic training on how RVs work and how to fix them. We're gonna get into that right now. Details coming up on RV Street. Okay, let's go on inside into the classroom and let's get started. You know, there's a lot to this uh, new RV lifestyle and there just is no reason why everybody has to go through the school of hard knocks. Our videos are going to show you step by step how to avoid the most common mistakes new RVers make. And trust me, I know how important training is. Our RV channel, has just broken 1 million views and it has helped a lot of people. If you're new to our channel, our videos are going to ensure that you get yourself off on the right foot and avoid a lot of problems. Those of you who are already subscribed, it would be a great thing for you to go down below and just put in a quick comment and tell the new folks that are here today how RV Street has helped you. So today we're going to cover these six things. Number one, why do I need a TPMS and what is a TPMS? Number two, RV water. Number three, why should I be concerned about plugging into a campground electrical pedestal? Number four, tools. You're going to need tools, trust me. Number five, taking care of the outside of your RV. This is important. And number six, how to work together as a team with your partner as you are traveling. So let's get started. Number one, the most important thing, whether you have a trailer, a pull behind trailer, a fifth wheel, a toy hauler, or a motor home, you need to have a TPMS system, a tire pressure monitoring system. And you want all tires, all tires, to be monitored by this system. Just think of all the planning that you have done thus far. I mean, you've been looking forward to this a long time. You have been planning, you have been spending a lot of money, and now you're getting ready to go on the road and everything you have is riding on your tires. And if anything happens to one of those tires while you're underway, that's when bad things happen. And I promise you, it will not be pretty. This is why you want an early warning system, an alert that will tell you when something is going on with your tires while you're underway. Now you may check your tire pressure before you leave, but that's not good enough. You may be fine when you leave the house or the campground, but just think about it. Once you're on the highway, you could have a failed valve stem, or you might pick up a nail, or you could pick up a piece of metal, or what have you. And now all of a sudden, one of your tires is losing air. It may not be a lot, it may just be a little bit. But as that tire is losing air, the other tires are beginning to take the load. And you've got a lot of weight riding on those tires. And you know what? If you do not have a TPMS system, you'll never know that that's happening behind you. Having a TPMS system right up front in the cabin area, whether you're pulling a trailer in a truck or you're in a motorhome or what have you, you're going to be able to monitor all your tires and be alerted if any one of those tires starts to go bad for any reason. I covered everything you want to know about this in my part two, crucial, high priority things 
every RVer should have with them at all times. Trust me, RVing and being on the road is a lot of fun. But if you're not prepared enough, and especially not having a TPMS system, and something goes wrong with one of those tires, that real uh, fun RV trip you were looking forward to can turn into a nightmare. So make sure you watch that video, and I give you all the information you need to know about that. Now, in addition to a TPMS system, you do not want to overload your RV either. According to the NTSB, 60%, just think about that, 60%, 6 out of 10 RV accidents are caused from an RV being overloaded. They just didn't pay attention. They didn't weigh their RV. They, don't know, they didn't even know that this was even something I needed to think about. So you need to know your weight of your RV. Knowing your weight is going to give you the information you need to properly put the amount of pressure in your motorhome tires. And I covered this in great detail. It's math. It is not a guessing game. You don't just say, well, that ought to be good enough. Or you read a tag on, the, on your motorhome. So I highly encourage you to watch the video how to determine proper air pressure in your motorhome tires. This is basic training and it will save you a lot of headaches down the road. Now don't get worried about taking notes or anything like that here because at the end of this video I'm actually going to show you. I'm, I've created a list of all these videos that you should watch. This is the RV Newbie basic training videos. I'm going to they're all right there and a real good list. If you go through that list and you watch those things, you'll be miles ahead of most RVers that are just getting started. All right, let's get to number two, water. You need to learn how your water system works. There's a whole lot more to it than parking somewhere, taking your hose and hooking it to a spigot. Trust me. The quality of water as you travel is going to vary from place to place to place. Some places will have very hard water. Some places will not. Some places are going to have good water pressure. Some, some places are going to have poor pressure. If you don't set up your water correctly, you're inviting unnecessary problems to your health and to your RV. I've also covered this subject in great detail in three videos. The first one is set up your wet bay right the first time and be done with it. And number two is controlling the amount of mineral deposits and calcium that can build up in your plumbing system and your appliances in your RV. And the third video is boondocking. How to stretch out 80 gallons of water in your freshwater tank. So be sure to watch those two. Again, they're going to be in the list of videos I'm going to give you at the end. You can have safe, good tasting water throughout your RV and protect all the appliances in your RV. You do not have to buy uh, cases and cases of water, carrying them along with you, taking up more room, more weight, something else to buy all the time, and disposing more plastic in the environment. It's totally unnecessary. I cover the importance of proper water filtering and a water softener, and this will protect everything in your RV for years and years to come. Once you set up your water correctly, you'll be able to put this same filtered, softened water in your fresh water tank. And you should be carrying some uh, fresh water with you at all times. I mean, just think about it. If you're on the road and you want to take a break, you have water there to clean up, to go to the bathroom, what have you. And not only that, but you should be carrying water with you at all times because when you arrive, wherever you're going, there may not be water available. There's been many times where we have arrived at a campground and they're working on the water system. The water is shut off for whatever reason. But you know what? We've got water in our fresh water tank. That's a good thing. One last thing about water. This is a little power tip from Martin. Anytime you leave the coach, go to the pool, go exploring, go to the store, whatever, turn the water off at the source. You don't want bad things to happen while you're gone. So just turn it off. So another habit that Joni and I practice is, is that in the evening, when we're all done washing, doing our dishes, all that, and we're gonna watch TV or whatever, 
will go out and will turn the main water source off. I'll come back into the coach and turn the water pump on and we start using our fresh water tank for the rest of the evening. But before we go to bed, we turn that water pump off. That way while we're sleeping, we run no risk of having a bad water leak issue like many people have ran into. Number three, electric. Just like water, you don't want to just hook, take your power cord from your RV and plug it into a pedestal. You don't know if that pedestal is wired correctly, the campground may be very crowded, and the electrical current is fluctuating a lot. The, the, you have a lot of expensive, sensitive electronic equipment in your RV, and these systems need to be protected. And the way you protect them is you plug in an EMS, an electronic monitoring system. This is an important thing that you plug in to the pedestal first. And that EMS is going to tell you, first of all, whether that pedestal is working correctly. If it gives you the thumbs up, now you can take your cord from your RV and plug it into that EMS. And now as the campground may fluctuate uh, with its current, you know, everybody's running their ACs or what have you, the EMS is going to shed uh, electrical power from one place to another to make sure you don't fry some of your systems in your RV. This is a very, very important thing to do. There are portable EMSs and a hardwired EMS. I go into this in great detail in my part one of crucial high priority things all RVers should be carrying with them at all times. You need to watch that video and yes, that will be in the list also. Number four, tools. This is a man thing, right? No, it's not. There's a lot of you women out there that are riding solo and, or maybe you have a partner or what have you, but if you're in an RV, you better have a good set of tools, a wide range of tools, because you're going to need these tools. Whether you have a roadside um, breakdown or you're in a campground and all of a sudden something doesn't work or you need to do your maintenance items, you need to have a wide range and a good set of tools. Now, I'm not going to go into that here because, again, I've done a great video on showing you the kind of tools to give you an idea of how to, how to build a good toolbox and bring it with you. I covered this in great detail. Again, <laughs> this is in part three of my crucial high priority things every RVer should carry with them at all times. Okay? I'm not talking about having a little canvas bag with a hammer and a couple screwdrivers and a crescent wrench. And I'm also not talking about having a full-blown roll-away snap-on toolbox either. But again, watch that video and you'll be able to see uh, a good rounded toolbox that you should be carrying with you. And since you can fix this stuff yourself, which we show you on our channel, you're not going to have to call a mobile tech to come out and you know spend uh, 125 bucks an hour uh, paying this guy uh, to help fix whatever you... I mean, we're going to show you how to fix this stuff and you're going to have the tools to do it yourself. Because you guys can do this. Most of you can do these things. You just need to be shown how to do it. And that's what we do here on RV Street. Number five, taking care of the outside of your RV. As you travel, as you probably already have, you know how you go into some of these campgrounds and you look at some of these uh, RVs and you're like, wow, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Man, that RV is pretty. Some of those RVs are 5, 10, 15, 20 years old. We have one right next door to us right now that is over 20, 20 years old. 140,000 miles on it. You ought to see this thing. It's gorgeous. But that's not by accident. It's because they learned how to take care of it. If you don't learn how to take care of the outside of your RV properly, what's going to happen is, is it's going to die in slow motion. And then delamination begins to happen and you just watch all the money that you spend on this RV just begin to deteriorate. It's not hard to take care of the outside of your RV, uh, but there is a right and a wrong way and how to protect it from the damaging UV rays that comes from the sun. That's the number one thing, keeping it clean and protecting it. And I covered this also in another video 
on how to take care and wash and protect your RV. That will be in the list. I highly recommend you watch this and you'll be one of those folks that drives into a campground and they'll be looking at your RV going, wow, that thing is beautiful. It's a way to protect your RV and use it for years and years to come. Number six, most of you who are starting in this new RV lifestyle are going to have a partner. Not all, but most. And learning how to divvy up the different responsibilities and who's going to make reservations and who's going to break down inside and who's going to break down the stuff outside and all those responsibilities, who's going to take care of checking and, and who pays the bills and all those type of things. Those things are all going to have to be worked out because it's different when you're on the road. And one of the most important things that Joni and I have uh, learned to work out is how to travel stress-free. We have designated duties. We have certain responsibilities that we do. And it's, it's become like rote. And it has really uh, uh, removed almost all of the stress in our traveling. I highly encourage you to watch this video, Working as a Team. I've done an extensive video on how Joni and I uh, worked out all these things and how we literally travel practically stress-free. And it will also be in the list of RV newbies basic training. Now, as you can see, I summarized these six videos that I have done previously. Because if I, compi if I compiled all these into one video, this thing would be two hours long. Nobody would watch. <laughs> but I'm giving you a summary of each one of these really important categories that'll make your RVing a whole lot easier, less frustration, and save a bunch of money. But watching these videos is not enough. I mean, you literally, you know, as you learn, you implement and you do, just like in basic training in the military, they teach and then you do. They teach and you execute. And when you do those things and get the tools and and put these practices in, in motion, you're going to see that you're going to be miles and miles uh, in front of anybody else uh, that's getting into this that hasn't taken the time to learn. So trust me, uh, these things are really going to make uh, your dream come true with a lot less stress. As always, in every video, including this one, right underneath each video, there is additional information in the description text. And in that description text, I give you links to other videos that you might like, uh, links to, to the gear that I used in that video, and I also gave you a link to our Amazon store. It makes it real easy to get the gear that you need and not waste money on stuff that has already proven to be a failure. So we can save you a lot of money there. And if you're new to YouTube and you're really kind of unsure on how to get to the description text or how to share videos or how to comment or any of those things, I've created this video right here. It's a tutorial that will show you how to navigate in throughout YouTube and it'll allow you to get more information, how to post questions, how to comment, how to share, and all those kind of things. So if you're having trouble on YouTube, be sure to watch that video. Here on RV Street, like I said earlier, my goal is to equip you with the knowledge and the step-by-step -step process on how to take care of the things on your RV. DIY stuff. It'll make you confident on how to work on your RV and it'll save you money. So like I said in the beginning of this video, I created a playlist just for you. The RV newbies are just getting started. And I put all those videos in a playlist. And this will jumpstart you right off the bat. Now to get to that playlist, go to our main YouTube channel page. And you see right here, it says playlist. Click playlist. That'll take you to our playlist page. And on that playlist page, there's going to be RV Newbie Basic Training. And you see right underneath there where it says View Full List. Click that and you'll see all these videos that cover all the subjects that we just covered here. And I'm confident that if you watch those videos in that list, that'll jumpstart you and get you off on the right foot. You're going to be so far ahead of anybody else. 
you're going to be excited to get on the road and you're going to know that you're going to be safe and you're doing the right thing. And don't forget, in addition to that playlist, there's another playlist there you can see. It's uh, DIY upgrades, maintenance, and all those. I mean, there are tons of videos in there and you can see that right up here. So don't be afraid to move around in our channel. There's tons and tons of information that'll help you. That's what they're there for. If you have not subscribed to our channel already, I highly encourage you to subscribe. Subscribing is free. When you hit the red subscribe button and then ring that bell off to the right, you're going to be notified the next time I upload my new video. I cover all kinds of stuff. You'll love it. And we really try our hardest to upload a new video every Sunday night at 830. And let's go have fun. So until next time, this is RV Street. Stick around.